Thank you very much. Well, I guess I don't have to tell anyone in this studio audience that next month, the daytime soap opera, The Doctors, is going off the air. Now, it's always a very... No, no, no. This is very sad. Uh, it's very sad when a program ends. They have been on the air, I believe, 20 years. Now, naturally, everyone wants to know how will the series come to an end. And since they taped the show right here in our building, the RCA building, we thought that we would go down there to their studio on the third floor and find out. Now, obviously, I can't go. I have to stay here and look at the world's most peculiar dogs with you folks. So uh, what we need are volunteers from the studio audience. It was interesting, uh, behind the scenes, a man was nearly knocked unconscious by a camera lens right here, four feet from me. Uh, what we need now, some volunteers from the studio audience to go down there and find this information uh, for us. And I believe we've pre-selected some folks. And if you have been pre-selected, please come down here. And they're there. They're working their way down right now. Thank you very much. Here they are. Do you have any soap opera music, Paul? Ah, uh, yes. Oh, that's very nice. How do you do? What is your name? Betty Wilson. Betty Wilson. Nice to see you. And your name is? Wells Hahn. Wells Hahn. Hahn. And yes. where, are you, where are you from, Wells? I'm from Houston. I lived there for a year. I'm from New York. Uh-huh. That's quite a little story you've put together. <laughs> uh, uh, what do you do for a living, Wells? I'm a sales rep for a PA firm in Houston, Texas. Okay. And, and uh, Betty, what do you do for a living? I'm a housewife. Uh -huh. in, in Houston? Mm -hmm. Oh, this, uh, do you know one another? No, no, we just met in the lobby. Well, this could be exciting, <laughs> couldn't it? Uh, ha have you seen the, uh, the program, The Doctors, Wells? No. And Betty, how about yourself? No. Okay, if you watch the monitors, let me give you some inform information uh, that you're going to need in, uh, in pursuing this. We're going to find out how the uh, show ends. So if you just watch the monitors. Now, this is the cast of The Doctors right there. Uh, don't let their smiles deceive you. <laughs> If they know anything about how the series will end, they'll kill you before they talk, it says here. Now, this is Alec Baldwin, who portrays Billy Aldrich on The Doctors, or he did. Alec was secretly investigating how the series would end when his character was brutally murdered on last Friday's show. He's young, debonair, and so very, very dead. This is Tony Randall and Swoosie Kurtz. They're stars of the NBC hit series Love, Sydney. They're sympathizers with the doctors, so watch out for them Saturdays at 9.30, 8.30 Central Time. <laughs> this is, of course, the Statue of Liberty. If you see her, it means you've gone too far and have more than likely left the building. Now, uh, I tell you what, we're going to have to change your identities because if you're caught, we can't uh, be responsible for you. Your name is Betty Williams? Wilson. Betty Wilson. All right, we'll change it to Betty Will Williams. Williams. All right, remember that. And your husband's name is? John. John. We'll change his name to Jim. Okay. okay. And uh, you're? Uh, Wells. Wells. All right, Wells, I tell you what, we have a, a passport for you here. Uh, this, by the way, is <laughs> the actual size of passports in the... <laughs> uh, I think actually real passports are much bigger than this one, but... Now, uh, Wells, we would like you to assume the identity of Laszlo Kruger, it says here. You were born in Vienna of Russian parents, though you carry a Turkish passport. Well, that explains the size here. Um, you were educated at Oxford and currently reside in Switzerland as a ski instructor. How is your Swiss-Austrian accent? Not bad. Could you try a little? Not bad. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's perfect. There you go. Just cover your mouth with the passport. Now, um... <laughs> Uh, I tell you what, uh, Betty, we're, we'd like you to pose as a, uh, you're here just as a tourist, right? On my honeymoon. On your honeymoon? Yes. Oh, well, isn't this... Yeah. That, that's exciting. When, when were you married? October 2nd. October 2nd, and, uh, oh, so, so I guess it's still a, it's, a, it's a long honeymoon, isn't it? About a month and a half for you. <laughs> uh, how long have you been in New York? Uh, one day. One day. And you drop the bags off at the hotel, race right over here, huh? <laughs> okay, here, Betty, I want you to, you'll be the New York City tourist. Now, uh, 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 when you're touring New York, it's important to, to wear the, the I Love New York stuff. Now, this, if you're followed, if you're followed at any time, just pull this little ring here, and this will put down an oil slick. <laughs> Good Lord. Good Lord. Yes, sir. Sometimes rehearsal might help. There you go, Betty. Um, put down an oil slick. Poor woman on her honeymoon. She's knee deep in oil. Um, all right, and here is this uh, camera. We want you to take a lot of photographs, Wells. Uh, we need to find out how this story comes to an end. Put that on. It's disguised by this tie. They really won't know you've, you've got it on there. There. Okay. All right, now, uh, one more thing, uh, 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 Betty and uh, Laszlo. Uh, 
you're going to need a guide. So, ladies and gentlemen, the actor who played Billy on The Doctors, meet now Alec Baldwin. Alec? <laughs> Alec, thank you very much for being here. Uh, uh, Alec is uh, working for us now since his character on the show was killed off, and uh, I understand you're bitter. Is that correct, Alec? Uh, that's right. I I'm bitter. And uh, I'll do anything I can to destroy the doctors as they destroyed me. Okay, so on, on that note of optimism, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to send you on your mission. Good luck and report back to us when you find some information about how the uh, series comes to a conclusion. Thank you very much, sir. Good luck to you, Betty. If you'll just go right up there. And uh, Alex. There they go. Uh, we'll be right back with Mr. Andy Kaufman there, right after this commercial. As you know, earlier in the show, we sent two audience members down to the doctor's studio along with ex-doctor's actor Alec Baldwin. Uh, their mission has been completed, and they're back with us in the studio to report on what they've uncovered. First of all, Alec, uh, when you left earlier, you seemed to be pretty bitter. How do you feel now? Uh, seeing the place where I used to work uh, only made me feel more bitter. Jesus. <laughs> Geez, Alex, this bitterness seems to be eating you alive. Good heavens, try and relax, if you will. The other two members of this crew were uh, Betty Wilson. Betty, uh, nice to see you again. And Han Wells. Uh, Wells Han. I'm sorry, Wells Han. <laughs> That's all I'm sorry. Wells Han. Uh, what, what, did you, uh, what did you folks find on your mission to the uh, third floor there? Well, what we found, first of all, was a cue card. All right, hold that the... up to this camera, Wells, and if you read off a little and see what the... This could be the secret to the, uh, what's happening. You want to uh, read it? It was a joke, Doctor. You always had a rather frightening sense of humor. We were just fooling around, Doc, no problem. Tell me, Ken, uh, how are you feeling today? Well, that's pretty nonspecific stuff. Betty, you have some photographs there, right? Yeah, it's, it's a payoff, obviously. A payoff. We have receipts here. White wine. Ooh, two bottles of white wine. And pretty good stuff. Six, bo six bucks for two bottles of white wine. <laughs> And this one looks like $20 for pie. I don't know. <laughs> Wine and pie. Well, all right, you have photographs? Yes. Okay. Well, this is a photo of just what we've seen. This is Wells or mm -hmm. Han or whoever this man claims to be <laughs> holding a... Uh... Is there any point in seeing this? There. So much more exciting when you see the actual photograph, isn't it? <laughs> what else do you have, Betty? Uh-oh, this could be trouble. A big jar of placebos, it says on there, huh? Okay. And let's see, one more. I can't read this. you know what that says, Betty? Please return women's room key to the doctors. Hmm. Well, I don't know what to make of all of this. It certainly has been a lot of fun, though, hasn't it? Uh, did you enjoy your visit? I think this one's important. This one is important. Here we have a... Uh, oh, this, this appears to be our crew up there. <laughs> These are the gentlemen that are working on this program, and they were up there just sort of sitting around? Oh, great. Okay. All right, fine. Uh, thank you very much, Betty and Wells. Thank you very much. Alec, pleasure. Appreciate your help. We'll be right back. a two-time Emmy Award-winning actor, also the host of his very own podcast entitled Here's the Thing. Ladies and gentlemen, say hello to our good friend, the one, the only, Alec Baldwin. Alec? <laughs>
Nice to see you, Alec. You know, I thought... You look great. You're very kind. You know, I thought if, I, if we stood here long enough and they applauded long enough, maybe they would give me my own uh, talk show on television. But, oh, wait, I'm sorry. I already had one. <laughs> and yeah. I got fired. No, no, but, you, but that was silliness. The whole, that, that whole thing was silliness top to bottom. You should have your own talk show. You have the podcast. What's the difference? I have my own talk show. I do. I have a talk show on the radio. Yeah, and, and there you're not constricted uh, by time limitations. Uh, and I've heard it. Uh, all, I heard it on the BBC. You're world uh, known on you your... You heard my podcast on the BBC? Yes. I didn't even know that it was on the BBC. Call somebody and see about a check. Do you realize when the show, when your show finally is over, uh, that the only people in this building who are going to be able to really reliably get a job after this is Paul and the musicians? That's right. That's right. <clears throat> That's yeah. right. Well, you guys the, can always get a gig, can't yeah. you? But Especially the, the with uh, these suits, the, the, you know, they're going to be banging down my door. The technicians, the <clears throat> cameramen, the audio yes. men and women, everybody, everybody will work but me. Yeah. Uh, I've got nowhere to go either. Now listen, congratulations. Uh, uh, I just heard this fantastic news. You, you have a, a beautiful little girl named Carmen. Right. Who is a, a year old. Right. About 19 months. 19 months. Right. You're expecting another. My wife and I are going to have a, bo a boy. A boy. Well, congratulations. Thank you. I have a boy. You must be very excited about this. Well, that's what happens when you're out of work, Dave. You've got a lot of time in your hands. You know what I'm <laughs> But uh, uh, having, no. having the little girl, you, you get uh, into everything you need to get into about raising a little girl. And now, we, we change it up, you're going with a, a little boy. Well, I'm going to be 57, I am 57 years old, and when my son is born, uh, I'll have two kids under two years old. That's great. And I just think to myself, I would be out there and be like, go long, go long. Not that long. Come back. Come back. <laughs> it's going to be interesting to raise a son. You have a son. I have a son. I was 57 when he was born. No. Yep, I was 57. That's exactly what I am. And, and, and I thought people must think I'm the biggest fool alive, but I don't care. I have loved every second of it. Yeah, I can, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. Now, um, but they do change your, your life. How has your life changed with Carmen? Well, I have to say, having kids, I mean, you think about how in a retirement kind of uh, arc, you think, well, I'm going to work, you know, for another uh, three years, five years, eight years. Well, now I've got to work until I'm like 75 years old, you know, to pay for my kids. Mm -hmm. And all of my career vanity is out the window now. I mean, I'm literally uh, ready to host Family Feud if I have to. I don't even care. You'd be damn good. I stand in the mirror every morning. I'm sitting there going, survey says, and I'm rehearsing. <laughs> You'd be damn you know, good. I think I friend. would be damn good at Family Feud. <laughs> but uh, what would it, uh, uh, upset me, I think, would be the travel. If you're uh, off shooting movies, often uh, locations way, way far away. I did two films this fall. I went to go to Mission Impossible Part 5 with Tom, mm -hmm. and I went to London, and we were in Morocco, and then London. And, uh, uh, and it was funny because you know, I hadn't done a big movie like that where they had this seemingly inexhaustible amount of money. And you'd fly to London and you'd work a few days and then you'd come back and they'd call you and say, we need you to come back next week. I'd say, oh, really? And they'd say, yeah, we, we want to reshoot that shot. We want you to turn the doorknob with your left hand, not your right hand. Really? Or, or something. You know, it, it, it almost seemed that way. I mean, I'm kidding, but it's like they fly you over there and they, they're just very thoughtful and deliberate about filmmaking. And I hadn't done that a while. I went there five times in five months to London. For the doorknob <laughs> shot. I had to turn the doorknob. <laughs> I did the doorknob shot several times. <laughs> now, let me uh, ask you two things. Your wife, Ilaria, how is she? Yeah, she's great. My, yeah. my wife is great, and my, my life is uh, my family, my daughter. We're going to have the baby. Do you mind if I show a picture of Carmen? Yeah, yeah I think you have a, one of we my have favorite a pictures. Beautiful, a fantastic yeah. picture. There she is. Aww. She's kind of a. She actually. I, I hate to say this, but the resemblance to Paul is uncanny. <laughs> now, the same, sty same stylist. <laughs> same stylist. Otherwise, though, no. it's amazing. Look at how sweet she is. Thing. How sweet she is, and, and how quickly uh, you'll have that as a memory when she used to, to hold your hand like that, walking almost. No, she's through. incredible. Yeah, yeah, she's really a It's delightful. Yeah. Well, I'm very happy for you. We'll be right back with Alec Baldwin, everybody. <laughs>
finish up here with um, Carmen. Uh, is she, is she, is she, does she know she's expecting a little brother? Does she know that's going to happen? Well, I mean, you, you have a child. I mean, um, I've said this before. You know, I mean, my daughter is so loved and she's so cared for. And we have people who help us out with the baby. And my, my, my wife is very hands-on. She's with the baby, you know, all the time. And this kid just has her rear end shined all day long. I mean, it's incredible. Yeah. And she's got this kind of, kind of very monarchical kind of view of the world. You know, she wakes up every morning, she's like, hello, hello, hello. Really? And everyone's loving her and kissing her and hugging her. And yes. she's like, thank you, hello, hello. And uh, we think when the boy comes, you know, what's, uh, who knows what's going to happen? How's she going to handle it? She's going to be somewhat dethroned or asked to share power there. I don't know how that's going to work out, so we'll see. I think um, what uh, I've heard, although I've not had the experience myself, is Carmen will look at the uh, little boy. Do we know the name? Do we not want to say the we name? We have a bunch of names. Yeah, we have a bunch. We haven't, we haven't got it narrowed down. Yet. Okay. Dave. Dave. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I don't see why not. I don't see why not. I see why not. Work for you. <laughs> uh, it, anyway, she will look at the, the new baby as, as her baby. Yeah, that's very true. That's very true. She will look at the baby as her new baby. Mm -hmm. And if she could pitch in and pay for the new baby, too, that would be <laughs> great. But, uh, uh, let's uh, talk about uh, oh, what was the thing? It seemed like there's always a deal. Uh, and this one happened a couple of days ago. And it was a, a wage-related protest. We want more money, uh, minimum wage kind of a thing. You're getting close. Keep yeah. going. You're getting close. Yeah. And, and I uh, hats off to you for championing mm. that cause, because uh, a livable wage, by God, in this country, if we can't guarantee a livable wage, what's the point? Well, uh, to be fair, you're getting it entirely wrong, actually. It's uh, <laughs> the... Um, the um, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we don't name the child Dave after all. But the, the, um, I was driving in my car, and we couldn't get across town, and I was going to work. This was yesterday. And I, and I get out of the car to find out what, why the streets were closed off. And I go, and as I meander over to this protest, suddenly I'm in this thicket of people, and there's all these cameras there. On me, and they all put the cameras on me and say, what are you here for? I said, well, I don't know why they have to have their protests in Midtown at 6 o'clock in the middle of the rush hour. Yeah. And all of a sudden it was like, BOO! <laughs> people, they, were gonna, they, were going to, they were going to stampede me and kill me. <laughs> so I ran out of there, and I went home. <laughs> and I hid in my apartment. <laughs> so, no, but I'm, I am, I'm very much in favor. I mean, I don't think anybody that, that we would know who's reasonable is not in favor of uh, yes. the, the, the living wage thing. I mean, I want them to have whatever they want. And I just, it just was weird how I, I guess I, maybe I got it wrong. I, I would like them to have moved the, the, the yeah. protest but I, I down two, to like, you know, I have two observations. Canal Street or something. <laughs> One, stuff like this seems to happen to you. Yes. Uh, and two... It's because I care. It's because I care. Yeah. And two, uh, if, if we want to call attention to a higher wage and a better standard of living, why do we want to piss off... Uh, two or three million New Yorkers at rush hour. Well, I thought to myself that the, 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 that was the idea. Was was the idea to just be disruptive, or did you want to engender people's support for your cause? Sure. But now I have no opinion about it whatsoever. <laughs> I want them to do whatever they want to do. They can have the protest in my living room if they want to. At four in the morning. <laughs> it's the all new news. Alan Baldwin. That's the light. I didn't understand. <laughs> We're and now we're back here, everybody. There he is, ladies and gentlemen, Alec Baldwin. I have a uh, staff member leaned in during the commercial, and I've asked them not to do that. Uh, and they said, get him to do a little Tony Bennett. Oh, I can't. But, you know, people always say, they always say, how does SNL, uh, uh, how do they come up with, you know, these kinds of things? And I say, well, they all sit and they watch TV. And one day we were sitting there eating like, you know, in the old days, SNL, Lorne would feed the writers like nine times a day. Mm -hmm. They would sit there in that room and write, 
And Lauren, like, like at 2 o'clock, the spare ribs would come, and at 4 o'clock, the pizza would come, and at 5 o'clock, the sushi would come. And they kept feeding them like cattle, you know, all day long while they're writing these jokes for Lauren. And they just fed them and fed them. And we'd sit there, and I'm eating, you know, I'm eating my, you know, corn on the cob or whatever I'm having there at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And, uh, and Tony Bennett comes on some uh, Christmas special, some ad. And he says, and I said, this guy just reminds us about how the business is supposed to be fun. You're supposed to enjoy yourself. Because mm -hmm. he's there going, you know, uh, this Christmas we got a great, 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 great show. <laughs> and we watched the show, and I go, this guy is just so old school. And then we took off and we did like, well, nothing phases him. <laughs> so one day I bring out a guy who's an expert on uh, the, the, the treasures looted during World War II. And I bring out this guy and I go, and I say, so let me ask you something there, Rabbi. What's your beef with the Nazis? I say. <laughs> And I say the line, what's your beef with the Nazis? Oh, Lord. <clears throat> that sketch didn't make it to air. But later on, <laughs> we did uh, the Tony Bennett show. And I love Tony. And, he, and then the greatest, one of the greatest moments of my life was when Tony came on uh -huh. and played a Tony Bennett impersonator. Yeah. <laughs> and we had a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun. Now, let me ask you this. There, I know uh, from a friend of mine one great Tony Bennett joke. Do you, do you know the joke I'm talking about? No, I'm dying to hear this. Do you mind if I tell it? I you mind if I tell it? Tony Bennett, uh, who works nonstop, always works, and, and will work. He will probably uh, finish up a, a gig and pass away. He's always working. He loves to work and is a national treasure. So he's got himself a gig in Las Vegas at a big hotel casino, and he's doing two shows a day there, uh, two weeks, two shows a day. And opening for Tony Bennett is a comedian named Jackie Gale. Jackie Gale. Mm -hmm. you, you know who I'm Remember Jackie Gale? Yeah. And, uh, and so uh, Jackie Gale does his 20 minutes, and then Tony Bennett comes out and does his hour. They do that twice a day uh, for 14 days. One day, like late in the second week, uh, Jackie Gale is walking into the lobby. Tony Bennett is walking out of the lobby, and Tony Bennett sees Jackie Gale, and he says, Hey, Jackie, what are you doing in town? <laughs> You, that's like the Red Fox joke. Yes, it is. It's the same deal. Red Fox. Red yeah. Fox. Red Fox comes out on the stage in Vegas. It's like two in the morning, and they go, "Ladies and gentlemen, Red Fox." And they play dun 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 dun. Gets to the microphone. It's two o'clock in the morning. There's four people in the house. He goes, four people. I'm not doing no damn show for no four people." Dun 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 dun. He walks off. Right. And Billy Crystal. Was at that show. But Billy Crystal was now, there. Now, before we go, before we, we, we lose, I want to just say this really quickly. I got you some gifts. Oh, you, of course, gave me a beautiful wristwatch once. I did not get you a beautiful wristwatch. That's all right. But what I got you was, I got you a bag of alarm clocks. I got you a bag uh, uh, of, 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 of very cheap, inexpensive alarm clocks. Oh. I got you a week's worth. These clocks are for you to set when the show is oh, over and then just throw them against the wall and smash them because you don't have to go to work anymore. Oh, that's great. That's number one. That's fantastic. That's very... I, got you, I got you a bag of them. Thank you very much. Then the last thing I got you, this is my farewell gift to you. My farewell gift to you, uh, this loofah glove. Oh, yeah. Because now that you have a lot of time on, you're going to find out that you can really linger in the shower. You don't know what exfoliating is like. This is for exfoliating your skin in the shower. Well, you're going to have a whole new world in the shower, well, new world in the shower now that you have time. That's great. So you've been spending time in the dollar store. I've been at the dollar store. <laughs> Look at that, I'm ladies and gentlemen. the dollar store. store. Can I just heave one? You can just heave it. Yeah, just go ahead. <laughs> Legs caught. <laughs> Here we go. talking about. Ladies and gentlemen, the great Alec Baldwin. Thank you for everything. God bless you, John. Yeah. Hope to see you down the road. Yeah. We'll be right back with John Mayer.